hi. In this video, we're going to start with a project called logging. So first of all, let's talk about why we would do logging, what some of the benefits are, and then in the second part of the video, we will implement and log with our application, and then I'll show you a third part, which is a singleton programming pattern. So first of all, let's justify why we're doing this exercise. What is application logging? What are the benefits? So logging is the process of capturing information from various events in your application. In the example that we're going to program, we're going to track the logins, both successful and unsuccessful in our program. Think of other events, such as if there were a customer failure process in a checkout, or if there was some kind of a broken link in an application, you would want to know how often that occurs, when it occurs, and under what circumstances. And so logging is a great way for a person to analyze an application to see if there are improvements that can be made. So logging is sometimes used for auditing purposes. Let's say you have a legal requirement to know what was going on in your application. The accountants require that every transaction have a log. So for example, think of a, of a voting system. You want to know if you can go back through and recount the votes, and you want to know if there was some kind of a uh, anomaly in your program. So logging is a great way to know what happened at each moment of the way. And so auditing is one reason. So you can also track your application's functionality. So is the performance good? You might want to log how long it takes for a process to occur or how often something was abandoned by your users. Why did they quit? What was wrong with your application? Uh, you can also talk about production issues. So debugging things. So if there's a lot of errors occurring, let's say with database timeout connections or something, then you want to know how often. And then you can turn that into a report which would be a little bit more beneficial than just having a long list of events. So you can probably get by in your, in your uh, programming just with a console write if you are debugging a simple program. But if you want something more sophisticated, then you need what's called a, uh, a logging framework. And so we're going to use a popular framework called nlog and we're going to implement just a few features so that you get used to what its capabilities are. Now, log management then becomes a, a requirement. So if you're generating all kinds of records for the way your application runs, then you're soon going to want to have a system that is jo that its job is just to manage those log files. So you can aggregate them and manage them. So let's take a look at this program. This is a logging framework. I think you pronounce it Kibana. And you can see that its goal is to take a look at several different features of a network. So they have something called file beat, packet beat, metric beat, win log beat. Obviously, these are different programs that are generating data and probably huge amounts of data and pretty useless if you can't sort it and uh, summarize it. So they have a system that would collect things from your network and from your applications and put it into a single place that you can summarize. Uh, log management also says if we want to have some kind of an audit on what's going on in our system, uh, we're going to be filling up disk space or database space. And so part of a, a, a logging framework will help you manage to delete and purge out older records that are no longer required. So you can control the rotation of the files. As you can see, there might be an option here for limiting the file sizes or by date. Uh, you can probably have different ways to search your logs. So you can see here that certain lines are more important than the others. And so you might want to be able to create alerts and to highlight where the important parts are. Now, one thing that we will notice in our program that we're going to write here is there's different levels of logging. So in your uh, application, you can generate just informational things, such as an alert that says a login has occurred. Or there might be more severe things to say, like uh, uh, an attempt to log in failed, and that might be a warning level. So we're going to have four different levels of uh, verbosity, you would say, in our in a program we're going to write here, but here are a lot of others that you might see in different frameworks. 
So the verbosity level, let's say informational. So it is used just to record an event happened and you might be able to count them. And then the next one might be a warning. So you can see if we have a server error and that would handle exceptions. So a warning is a little bit higher level. An error is probably things that you never want to see in your application. And if obviously that's an important feature is you're managing your application. You want to see where the errors occurred. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a text file. It's going to be logging the events straight to from our application into a text file that we'll read with Notepad. And we'll use this thing called nlog and we'll install it using the package manager in Visual Studio called NuGet. So unfortunately, it doesn't include a commercial level um, logging framework, but it will get you started and you'll understand perhaps the concepts of how logging will work. So let's take a look at the page for nlog and see what they have. It says it's a flexible and free open source logging tool for .NET. And so let's take a look down here at some of the configuration that we can do. So we're going to get right into this in, in the code in just a minute, but I just want to show you some, some targets they might be called here. So if we were to set up a configuration for our log, you can see that they are recommending four different types or maybe it's three different types of targets. We can log to a file. That's what we'll do. You could log to a network, which means you'll probably log to another application somewhere else. You could also have some other customized log. So your logs can go to text files, they could go to databases, wherever you want to store data. We're going to use a text file in our example. So here's what our application is going to look like. We're going to uh, log this application here, which is our register and login app. We built this in a previous tutorial. It, all it does is it verifies that a user is in the database. And here is what the log file is going to look like. So we're going to have a bunch of informational log events that says we, uh, we are processing a login event. And then we're going to see a warning if a login fails. And then it'll tell us what password was attempted and the username. And then if there was a successful login, we will also log that as an informational level login. And so we're going to implement this with the nlog tool. And then the third part we'll get to is to create what's called a singleton programming pattern. So the first version will work just fine. And then the singleton will give you a better answer for how to develop a logging framework. So let's get started with our code. So I've opened up the program here, the registration and login application, and uh, it's a pretty simple app. So if you haven't done this already, you might want to back up and see how we developed this. So its purpose was to verify a login, and we have this event here called process login. And it will use a security service, and that service will return a Boolean value. So it'll either be a login success or a failure based on what can be found in the user database. So that's our starting point. Now what we're going to do is add the logging events for each of these success or failures. So to add the features that we need, we need to use the NuGet package manager. So I'm going to right click on the solution up here and choose manage NuGet packages for the solution. And this will tell us what has been installed and what we can install. So we can see that installed here, we have a couple of items that were automatically added as we program the app. Now I'm going to browse for some new items. So we click browse here. And what I'm looking for is nlog. So I just type in nlog and we'll see a bunch of things that are available to us. So the first basic package is the one that we just looked at online, which is here. So if you didn't know exactly what you were looking for, you could Google this, you could get to that web page I showed you, and then you can open it from there. Otherwise, you can do it straight from here if we know we're looking for nlog. So nlog is the package that is going to be installed. I'm going to select here and the version number. So you can see that the latest version of this date is uh, 477. You can probably update that to something newer if you're from the future. So let's go ahead and install that. So after the application's installed, I'm going to go and choose on the installed options and clear off here. And we should see nlog is now added. Now let's go back and see what else there is, something that we could probably benefit in addition to the standard nlog. 
So you can see there's lots of options here. The, the only one that we're going to pick on right now is this thing called nlog.config, which will give us a sample configuration file that we can modify. So let's go ahead and choose the regular, the latest, and choose install in this one as well. Now this one also seems to be interesting, the schema, uh, it'll help you with some IntelliSense, which will be type ahead things. We're not going to be doing much typing at all in the configuration file, so I'm gonna leave that one alone, but that would be an option too. Okay, so let's close this, and now I'm going to go see what's going on in the uh, files over here. So I have a new file here called nlog.config, and uh, you can see that it is a uh, file that I can open. Now, I'm supposed to go ahead and edit the examples that are here, and so I can create my, uh, my, my new log events. However, I, I'm not quite sure why, but I have a little lock on mine, and I cannot edit anything. So if I try to type, I have a read-only file. So it's a mystery to me why this is occurring, and it shouldn't occur in your ap application, and it hasn't occurred in the past, but here it is. So what do I do to get to this file and edit it? So I did a, a little bit of a workaround to make this work. Uh, I, since I can't edit this file, I had to go find it. So I close here and let's go see where this might be stored. So I'm opening up the file explorer for the project here. This is uh, my register and login app. And I'm going into the bin folder and the debug folder and then for the version of uh, .NET that I'm using. So I'm using .5 or 5.0. And then finally in here, I found nlog config. Now, if I right click on that, I can open with, and you can see that I've set it to open with several different applications. So I could open it with Notepad, and uh, that's, that's okay. It's not as easy to read though. I'm just going to reopen it with Visual Studio, and I should be able to see it in the, uh, in the file here. So same file, same application. Now it's not read only anymore. So honestly, I have, I'm, I'm baffled as, as to why sometimes it's read-only and sometimes it's not. Anyway, I hope you don't have that problem. What you need to do is edit it somehow, whether it's with a text editor or with Visual Studio or whatever. So we're going to edit two things in here. Let's get started with the real part now. So right here, we have a section that's commented out, and these are called targets. So a target is where your data is going to be stored. So remember, back from the configuration uh, on the uh, website here where the, uh, the, the documentation is, you can do targets like file name, and you can do targets that are other servers, and probably databases as well. So what we're gonna do is set up a target, and you can see how the names are. They call theirs F1, F2, N1, D, S it looks like. So we're gonna just name a file and call that our target. Okay, back into the configuration. So let's take out the comments here, and we will have all of a sudden the, uh, the code spring to life with color. So the, the type that we're making is a file. Okay, then the name, we could just leave it as F. So that's not a problem. I'm gonna use a better name. So I'm gonna name mine as register and login app file. Okay, that's the name here. Now I'm going to take a look at where the file is. So they have a template already set up for us. This is going to be in the base directory or the bin folder. It's going to create a subfolder called logs and then name the file as the today's date and then have the dot extension or dot log for the extension. So then the layout is also going to tell us what is in each line of the file. So I'm not gonna to touch any of that. It's probably good enough as the default. So we'll leave that alone. Now, after we've created a target, which means we have defined a file that's going to be loaded, now we need to give the actual logger a name. So now let's go down to the section where the rules are. So we can see that there is a commented out section, and I'm going to add a end comment here and take out the other. Okay, so what's our comment say? We're gonna write all the events with a minimal level of debug. So that's the min, min level debug. And uh, we're also going to save it to something called F. So F is the target. Now we've renamed the target up here. So I named mine instead of F, I called it this uh, long file name. So let's uh, delete F and put it in here so that they both match. 
Now, what's the name of my logger? So I can use a custom name here. So I'm going to name mine as register and login app rule. So that's named after my program that I'm in. You can name it anything you want, but you do have to remember what it is and you have to use that in your program. So we have a target and then we have a logger rule. So let's address this here where it says min level is debug. I'm going to switch back into the documentation and let's take a look at the log levels that they offer here. So debug is listed here. It's for things like you see, such as authentication or sessions expired. Uh, the min level, if we just chose fatal, that would be very rare. Hopefully your program crashed. Uh, tracing could be used for the most often. So you want to trace through for loops or something. And uh, so there's different levels of of things that we can debug. So the minimum that we're going to do is focused on debug according to the configuration file that we have here. So that's what it's set up for. Okay, I'm also probably going to have a problem at the uh, level here where I left a comment uncommented. So that will cause some configuration confusion. So there we go. Now we've got the comments in where they belong. So let's save this. Okay, so now we're going to go and put this into our program. So I'm going to have to remember a couple of things as this right here, this rule, that's going to be important when we set up our logger. So let's go look at the controller now. So let's go and open up login controller and let's put some new information here at the top. So the first thing I'm going to do is instantiate a class for our logger. So a private static logger is going to be a new or it's going to be coming from the log manager dot get logger and we'll put some quotation marks there that we're going to have to copy from the configuration but first we have to import a few things so let's address the first one so logger doesn't seem to be recognized so let's see if there's some potential fixes so sure enough there is uh, using n log is one of my choices so let's try that and so logger disappears and log manager seems to work as well so so far so good now, for what rule do we want to do the logging? Well, that comes from our config file. So let's come back to here and I'm going to copy the rule and we're going to paste that into these quotation marks in the middle. So now it knows exactly where it's going to log to. It's going to create some file with a date on it and then it's going to have a certain format. All that configuration was done for us. So let's save here. So now the event that I want to check is on whether or not a login was attempted. So let's go to the process login action and add a line. So we'll say logger dot and we can choose warning or debug or error. And in this case, info makes sense. So info and then we're going to put in a string that says this is going to go into the log. So I'll say processing a login attempt. Now I'd like to know who was it that I tried to attempt to log in. So let's put in another line and we will try to log out the user object. Now user object isn't going to work because we don't have the appropriate two string method. So we have to do a sidetrack here. Let's go open up the uh, models and we'll add a new method here for the user model. So we're going to create a two string method so that way something actually prints out that is intelligible. So for our toString method, we will return a string and we'll say the property. So let's say name and the password are logged off as a string. So this will now print something sensible in the log. Okay, so let's take a look and see how this runs. I'm going to run the application and attempt to log in. So the application's up and running. I'm going to do slash login as the URL and then I'm going to put in Max and his password. And I click the login button and hopefully I have a successful login. So it looks like I have a successful login, I have a success message, and it shows me who logged in. Now let's go find this log that we created. So I'm going to open up the folder where my application is stored. I'm going into the bin, or the binary folder, and the debug, and let's see, the uh, .NET 5 I think is where I'm at, and hopefully I see a folder called logs. Okay, so this should be created for the application. If yours isn't there, something went wrong. And then here I have today's date and the log. So if I click on this and choose open with, I can pick an application such as Notepad. And let's see what Notepad says. So I have a message that says info level. 
and the message processing login. And it looks to me like the user model was logged out, but <laughs> I can't read it. I forgot to put something in the code. Uh, the two string method was never called, so that's why I have this unreadable message. So, so much for the two string. We'll fix that in a minute. Now we're gonna add some more events so we can see if there's a success or a failure login. So let's stop the app and let's go back and change some of the code. Okay, so instead of just logging off the user here, I'm going to put in a to string method and that way we can see if uh, something was incorrect. Okay, so now let's go down and to uh, a couple more events. So in the if statement here, we have a success level. So I'm going to have to put in some curly brackets because we have multiple statements. And then just before the return, I'm gonna do another log. So let's do logger and then we'll do info and we'll say login success. And likewise, down in the else statement, we're going to log off a failure. So we will put in some curly brackets and we will put in the logger dot, and in this case, I'm going to choose the warning level because, well, it's, an, it's a, an attempted login that failed. And then we will just put the message that said login failure. So we will be able to tell who logged in and who didn't log in, and we'll see the username and password that they attempted. Let's run the app and see if that actually works. So I'm back to the login screen. I'm going to use max and the password that I saved and choose login. And hopefully we have a success. So it says on the screen that the login was success. Let's go check out the logs and see what happened. So if I open up the log file, you can see that nothing has changed. So I have to close the notepad, go back to the application, uh, the, the internet with the Explorer, the file Explorer, and let's open it again. And this time you can see that we had a processing attempt. And when I logged off the user, the two string method actually showed me what username and password was, and then it was success. So, so far so good. Let's uh, close this and then do a login failure and see what kind of results there. So I'm gonna back up and let's put in a different name. So instead of Max, I'm gonna put in some junk after his name and choose login. Now we have a failure message that says didn't work. Let's switch back into the uh, file browser here and open up the log file and let's see what we get there. So now we have a warning level. It says login failure and it tells me who it was. So Max with some extra characters did not work. And so you can see that every second of my application is logged with the events, the level of warning, and then finally some data if I wanted to add to it. So this here is a log file and it looks like it will automatically create a new version of this every day. So this would be a good kind of a tool to go through and check to see what went wrong with your app, even though you're not watching it 24 hours a day, but the logger is. Now, the next part here I'm going to do is do some refactoring, and we're going to change our application into what's called a singleton pattern. So let's switch back into the controller and look at the code here. So there's nothing quite wrong with what we have. We have a, a a line here that says, hey, get me the logger and the rule that goes with it, and I'm going to start using it here. However, every time we use this, we have to instantiate it. What we're going to do is create a static method that will be able to be accessed from anywhere in any class in the application in the exact same way. And so let's see what we can do to make this happen and what kind of mysterious code is a singleton. So now we're going to create a new folder and put some items into that folder. So let's right click on the solution name and let's then choose new folder. I'm going to call the folder utility. Inside the utility folder, let's right click and choose create a new file. And what I'm going to create is an interface. So I'm going to name this as iLogger. And unfortunately, it looks like I's and L's are the same character, but that does say iLogger, what I typed here. Now let's modify the iLogger interface and change it into an interface. So I'll change the word from class to interface. And then I'm going to have four different actions that any interface uh, implementation will use. So these will be functions that will write to the logger. So the first one is at the debug level and it will take a message as a string, as a, as a parameter. The second event that we're going to implement is info. The third is warning. And the last is error. So Hopefully you recognize these as different levels of logging 
and the detail that they give. Next, let's create a class and uh, put it in the same folder. I'm going to name this class as my logger. And uh, I'm going to then implement the iLogger interface. So we put a colon iLogger. And then hopefully we see an error message that says you haven't implemented these yet. So we can offer suggestions and implement the methods that are in the interface. And so we just programmed those, so they look, should look familiar. We have four different events that we have to code now because we are going to fulfill the contract of that interface we just made. So now I promised you that we're going to show you what a singleton looks like. A singleton is a class that can have only exactly one instance. And so the first thing we're going to do is create and declare an instance of this class. So private static, and then the name of the class is my logger, and then the instance name is instance. So the magic here that makes this uh, singleton work is that we are only going to enforce one instance at a time to be in existence. So we're going to create an event or an action called get instance. So what's it going to do? It's going to check to see if the instance is null. That means we haven't we haven't in we haven't created one yet. If that's null, then let's go ahead and generate a new one and then we will return that. However, if it is not null, that means that some other place in the program has already asked for an instance and we're not going to create a new one. We're just going to say, hey, you've already got one. And so we'll return that. So we have a variable called mylogger or instance. Instance is of type mylogger. And every time we try to get the instance, we're going to make sure that we only have one. And if we've already got one, we're going to reuse it. Now the next variable that we're going to create is of type logger. So we'll do private static logger and uh, we'll just name it logger. Now you can see that logger is not recognized. So if we go and search for potential fixes, we will use the nlog library. And now we have a, a version of logger. Let's see if that looks familiar. It's because in our controller here, you've seen that before where we had a new logger right here. So we're, we're doing the same thing, but now we're doing it inside of, of a class called mylogger. So let's switch back into mylogger and continue. Now we're going to do another event very similar to the last one. This one is called get logger. We only want to have exactly one logger running at a time. So for this case, we're going to ask is mylogger.logger equal to null? If it is null, that means we haven't created one yet, so we will go and instantiate a new one. And so the log manager .get logger is the command to do that. And we need to put something inside these quotation marks to let it know which rule we're trying to log. And then after that, we go ahead and return the event called mylogger.logger. Now let's see, what was that string? I have it already in the login controller. And so this here is the string. I could copy it from here, or I could go back to the config file. The config file also contains it down here. So that's the, that's the string name that I need. So let's go back into my logger and paste it in between the quotation marks. So this here will instantiate exactly one logger. So now let's go and implement some of these actions that are down below, such as debug. So we'll delete the message that says an exception. Now, I want to get the logger. So we have the method now called get logger. So I'll put that in. So get logger with parentheses and then a dot. What can the logger now do? Well, we can do these four events. So we're going to say it's going to do the debug uh, event and then the message that goes with it. So since the, the other three are very similar, I'm going to copy and paste and change the method name. So the next one is called error. Uh, then the third one is info, and we'll change it to info. And then the last one is for warning. And so it's not spelled exactly the same way, so uh, getlogger.warn is what I'm looking for. So when we're finished here, we have ourselves a completed singleton. It does the exact same work that the other did, except now we're only guaranteeing that there's one instance of this logger running at any time in our application. So let's go and modify a few things in our controller. So the advantage of having a singleton here is that we no longer have to declare this item at the top of the page. So we can reference the singleton from any line in the code. Well, you can see that as soon as I delete that line, I have a message down here that says we got a problem. So what do we do instead of logger? 
Well, I have my logger as the is the uh, item here, and then I want to be able to get the instance, and then I'm going to call the info. So that's that's the model that I'm trying to do. Now, what's the problem here? It says my logger doesn't exist, so we do have to show that it is using the utility folder, and that shows up at the top here. And then my logger get instance seems to work just fine. So this is the pattern that I want for each of the logger items on the page. So let's see, delete that and delete the period. And let's do the same for the other log items below. So let's see, if we got everything set, we will have the exact same results except with this singleton pattern. Let's run the application and see what happens. Okay, it looks like I'm up and ready. Let's go ahead and try to log in. But before I do, I'm going to go back into the log folder. I'm going to delete the existing item just to make sure that I start from fresh here. So I've deleted the log file. Now let's switch back to the app and choose login. And let's see if the new log file is regenerated and the singleton works. It looks to me like a successful login just occurred. So let's go back into the folder where the logs are and sure enough, it regenerated the log file. Let's open it and we see that we have the same kind of log that we did before. So we have a login success with Max. And I assume that the password, if it failed, would also show up in the log. So looking back at what we just created here, the config file is where we started, where we defined a target, which in our case was a file. And so this could have been something else in a log system, but files work really nice for a demonstration. After we created the file, then we associated a rule with the target. So the target was writing to the file. And so once we have this rule here, then we were able to go into our code and insert that. In our version of the code that we have now, we have a singleton pattern. So the my logger is the tool that we can use globally. We can just reference it. And there is exactly one example or one instance of the logger in the program. So that's the advantage of the singleton. One other curious thing that you may have wondered is why did we bother making an interface here where we have these four events and then implement it? So really that was completely optional. The interface is for future planning. So if we show you something like uh, an idea called dependency injection, then interfaces will be important. But for right now, just consider it an extra step that really was just there to help you organize and plan for the actions that are in my logger. And so there you go. So nlog is the tool that we just demonstrated. Coming up next, we're going to do something called action filtering, and we can see some more events that are tracked as your program is run.